Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Since it is Anime Expo week, I have a couple of Anime Expo videos planned. Definitively those videos are this video, the pre-Anime Expo 2023 video, then there will be the Anime Expo vlog, then the Anime Expo 2023 commentary, and my merchandise haul. The order of the last two videos I mentioned, the 2023 commentary and the merchandise haul, those might switch around depending on how things go and depending on what I'm feeling in the moment and what I record first. But that's the plan and we'll see how it goes. Anime Expo 2022 recap. What a year. I will link the Anime Expo 2022 commentary video that I did along with the merchandise haul if you wish to watch either of those videos. But my personal main takeaway from Anime Expo 2022 was how overwhelmed I got, especially on the first day. And then that just exhaustion of sorts from getting so overwhelmed the first day trickled into days two and three. I don't even think I went the fourth day. Yeah, I didn't go the fourth day. I mentioned how that exhaustion from the first day trickled into days two and three from me. The mentality that I had where I was feeling so overwhelmed also trickled a little bit into the second and third days. Everything was just so overwhelming for me. I think a large part of that, looking back on it now, basically a year later, was the fact that Anime Expo was my first major indoor event that I had been to since COVID started. I had gone to Ren Fair mid to late May, but the thing with the Renaissance Fair is that it is very much an outdoor event, whereas Anime Expo is very much inside. There are cosplay gatherings that you can go to outside of the convention center, the Los Angeles Convention Center, but for the most part it is an inside event and it does include some of the other surrounding buildings like the hotel, the one hotel that's close by, but it is an inside event and as I said it was my first big indoor event since COVID for two years. So I think that was the major factor to me feeling overwhelmed, especially on that first day. But that's not to say that Anime Expo itself, the event itself, didn't factor into that because the crowds were insane in 2022. It makes sense because they didn't have it for two years but the crowds were insane and I don't think they were managed very well. The staff, the volunteers did the best they could to manage the crowds but in the end it wasn't the best job. I'm not pointing the blame at like the staff, the volunteers who were on site because it could have been anything. Another major issue that I had with Anime Expo 2022 which I hope they will handle better this year considering is that they had a mask mandates. It was supposed to be enforced that people would be wearing masks at all times indoors unless they were actively eating or drinking, which they didn't. And Anime Expo staff, the volunteers there did not enforce it at all. There were so many people who weren't wearing masks, but I feel like Anime Expo should have been prepared and had like stations where throughout the convention center where the staff would just sit and like they wouldn't necessarily be on their feet the entire time looking up for people wearing masks, have a bunch of extra masks on hand for people who don't have masks. They could have very well been prepared for that. If you had the Anime Expo app, you would get notifications every once in a while saying, please remember to wear your mask indoors at all times unless actively eating or drinking. That was the only reminder that I noticed where people were being told to wear their masks at all times. There was no staff, no volunteers projecting their voice, reminding people to wear masks. None of that. Just the occasional app message, which cannot enforce <laughs> people to wear masks because it's an app because people are just going to swipe up on that notification and ignore it and not put on a mask if they don't have a mask or they're not going to wear it. And I know so many people who got COVID at Anime Expo because maybe 60 to 70 percent of the people were not wearing masks. My mom and my sister got COVID. I somehow dodged a bullet with that. My mom and my sister both got COVID and they were both wearing masks the entire time. I think that was my biggest issue with the way they ran Anime Expo last year because if you're going to enforce masks mandate or if you're saying you must wear masks at all times indoors at the convention center while attending anime expo unless actively eating or drinking if you're saying that but overall i had my main note with this that kind of umbrellas over the points that i just mentioned the issues that i just mentioned there were certain parts of anime expo that were definitely organized to anime expo standards but i would say like 10 to 20 25 percent of anime expo 2022 was not up to normal anime expo standards and it was not organized very well i say 10 to 20 percent of it 25 percent at most of it felt disorganized because like as a whole it was pretty good for anime expo having just come off of covid but just looking at it and 
feeling what I felt during the three days that I went there. It really was like 50-50. Like I overall enjoyed myself as I think I've mentioned, but there were definitely quite a few parts where I was like, this does not feel organized very well. This does not feel like it was done very well. But looking back on it, like I've mentioned in this video, looking back on it, it was probably 10 to 20% rather than like a 50-50 deal. So maybe Anime Expo will do better this year. We'll see. Something else I feel like we should also talk about is Anime Expo Chibi. I honestly feel like that was a money grab for Anime Expo rather than the people behind Anime Expo being like, yeah, let's expand Anime Expo to more places. I definitely think that both were factors, but I think 99.9% .9 of it was a money grab and an attempt for the people behind Anime Expo, the companies behind Anime Expo, to make up lost money during the two years that they couldn't host Anime Expo. And then 0.1% of it was was oh yeah let's expand anime expo to another place because i honestly think if their main goal behind anime expo chibi was to expand to more places they wouldn't have held it in ontario california so i'm currently looking up as we speak and so you can see the los angeles convention center it's right here now let's look at the ontario convention center right here the thing as you can probably see with this map is that los angeles convention center is not north or south of ontario convention center los angeles convention center is west of the ontario convention center i'm pretty sure ontario convention center ontario california their convention center is significantly smaller than los angeles convention center these two convention centers are east west of each other and they're basically one and a half to two hours apart depending on what route you take the time of the day but if they had done it like significantly south or north of anime expo okay fine but what was the point of putting anime expo chibi in california when the two convention centers that you're hosting anime expo and anime expo chibi at are one to two hours apart depending on traffic this is why i think it was more of a money grab rather than a let's expand move note this is my 10th anime expo which is kind of weird to think about i've been going since 2012 2012 was my very first year i only went one day which i was kind of sad about in the end i only got a one day pass and i was kind of sad about that afterwards like the next three days i was sad about that yeah it feels kind of surreal that this is my 10th year going and i think at this point my approach to anime expo especially because of last year anime expo 2022 my approach to attending is that i'm just gonna get the four day badges and i'm gonna go when i want to go like whatever days i want to go and having the four day badge will give me that accessibility to just choose whatever days i go on rather than getting like a single day badge because then it's like i have to go on that day and i can't really switch it around or i can't miss a day so there's that <laughs> Since I mentioned that I'm gonna just get the four day badges in the future and if I decide to go all four days, then I go all four days. If I don't decide to go all four days, no big deal. But since I mentioned that that'll be my plan in the long run, it made me think about the prices this year for badges. The single day badges were relatively reasonable, especially considering how late registration went open, late in comparison to previous years. And they were also relatively reasonable in comparison to the four day badge. The four day badges started off at a hundred and forty five dollars not including tax and shipping and it's insane that they were that much i wasn't surprised by how pricey they were but at the same time i sort of was considering that 145 dollars was the first price and it again this is another form of money grab like the way that they did with anime expo chibi and i think they're tr also trying to use this as a way to limit the number of people getting 40 badges right now the the single day badges have not changed in price and saturday and sunday are 80 dollars. monday is 70 and tuesday is 50 because it's the last day so those are probably going to stay the same for a little while longer until we get closer to anime expo again i'm recording this pretty early on the 40 badges are currently 165 do not rely on this information for the prices because as i think i've said i'm recording this pretty early on in the year it's actually february right now but i wanted to get this video out of the way considering that i was thinking of this stuff so these are like the february prices and four day badges are now 165 dollars which is insane from what i saw like on their instagram page the 
doing like tier rankings for the prices like they have a certain number of 145 dollar passes and they have a certain number of 165 dollar passes which is their way of trying to cap the number of people getting 40 badges as i said and then going each day but it's like just I don't know what to say about this aside from the fact that it's so steep and it's a money grab i mean i'm still gonna go and as i said my first instinct will always be to get the four day badge so i have a little bit more leniency and ability to choose if i want to miss one day then i have that option to miss a day or two because they don't do two day badges anymore they just do the four day and the single day yeah i've been going long enough to remember this two day badges which they should honestly bring back i can understand where it might be difficult to do two day badges because like they have it set up as like one day saturday one day sunday one day monday one day tuesday and but i like it, it could be easy in the sense of like two day saturday sunday two day sunday monday two day monday tuesday um so they have like three options for two day badges depending on what two days or they could have like a fourth option of other where it's like what days do you want to go and you can choose like saturday and monday or sunday and tuesday or saturday and tuesday that's all i'm gonna say in this video thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the rest of my animaxo videos